Is Sony still unsure of what the PlayStation 5 price is going to be? I wouldn't go that far. However, I do think they're open to adjusting the price a little bit. So I do want to talk about some interesting comments made by Hiroki Totoki, who is the chief financial officer over at Sony. And that was said at Sony's latest investors call. So we'll go over that. Also, one of the biggest game franchises, to me at least, Ninja Gaiden might be making a return. Team Ninja is hard at work with Neo 2 right now. A lot of previews for that game have come out, and it looks like it's going to be really, really good. However, a lot of people want to see the return of Ninja Gaiden. I love Ninja Gaiden, and it looks like good news may be coming someday. And lastly, I do want to go over Daymare 1998 as it is coming to PlayStation 4 on April 28th. We'll highlight that uh, game at the end of this video. But first up... The PlayStation 5, big topic of discussion regarding that is, of course, the price point. Price point is such an important part of releasing a game console because we've seen it absolutely shoot some platforms in the foot. PlayStation 3, 599 US dollars is probably one of the most iconic meme moments of E3 history, and there have been quite a few iconic moments. Let's not dig down that rabbit hole in this video, but nonetheless, you look at 599 US dollars, you look at the Nintendo 3DS at 250, look, Nintendo platforms are usually priced pretty well. The 3DS, while it sold really, really well, and we look back on it really as uh, this awesome platform, initially it was not doing that well, and a big part was that $249.99 price point. Then they dropped it to $180, and of course everything turned around for the 3DS, and it ended up doing very, very well. But talking about the PlayStation 5's price point, Hiroki Totoki noted, what is not very clear or visible is because we are competing in this space, so it's very difficult to discuss anything about the price at this time. And he continued, it's a question of balance, and because it's a balancing act, it's very difficult to say anything concrete at this point of time. But when I said smooth transition, we mean that we will definitely choose the optimal approach and that we will try to have the best balance so that we will be profitable during the life of this product. This isn't the first time that Sony has referenced a smooth transition. They're looking to transition people from PlayStation 4 into PlayStation 5. And that's one of the incredible talking points about next generation because I think more so than any previous generation. Look, heading into the PS4 and Xbox One, Xbox 360 guys looked at the PS4 and they went that route. That is absolutely a part of the game. And I think heading into this newer generation, I think the brand loyalty factor is going to be more important than ever. I think more so than any previous generation. Look, last generation, the release of the 360, Microsoft got out of the gate real quickly. They undercut the PlayStation 3's release by a year. They put out the cheaper product. They just won in all regards. Yes, they took the L with the original Xbox and the original Xbox still did rather well, but with the 360, they did really well. And then heading into Xbox One and PlayStation uh, 4, brand loyalty wasn't as big of a factor as it is this generation because first of all uh backwards compatibility was not a thing initially and then microsoft just tried to ruin any kind of brand uh you know fandom that they had prior to the launch of the xbox one no use games always online all of those elements hurt the xbox one so much that at this point i do feel like they've recovered but i think over the course of the playstation 4's generation i think sony has established so much brand loyalty with their incredible exclusives and things like that that they're making this transition as seamless as possible and of course the price point is going to come into play. If the PlayStation 5 is more expensive than the Xbox Series X, I do think that's going to be a problem. I think both of these consoles will end up being released at the same price point, and I do think that's going to be $499. I do think some people are expecting a $399 price point. Given the hardware that's in the PS5, I do believe it's going to be a little bit more expensive. We've got a solid state drive. We've got this incredible performance being touted. I do think it's going to be more than 400, 450 to 500. And I think to get that even 500, I do think that's what they're going to ultimately go for. But it's a very interesting talking point that I think a lot of people are going to be on different sides of the fence. I think a lot of people are thinking, hey, get it as cheap as possible. The only way I'm going to spend $400 on it or $500 or whatever it is, if there's a, a quality lineup of games, some people don't even care about the price and ultimately they're going to decide buying it or waiting depending on the games lineup but all of these factors come together and I do think price point is very important but I don't think it's as important as people say like constantly touting the PlayStation 3 yes the PlayStation 3's price point hurt it but you have to look at the fact that the PlayStation 3 had a direct competitor in the Xbox 360 that was considerably cheaper and the PlayStation 3's game lineup didn't make up for that price difference so there was a lot of factors with the PlayStation 3's initial failure that extend beyond the price point but the price point was definitely a big part 
part of it. So with PlayStation 5, hopefully we do get it around $500. I think that would be my ideal price point. But for a lot of other people, you guys are going to think differently. And I definitely want to hear from you guys. Let us know what price point do you think would be ideal for the PS5. Some people are ready to shell out six, $700, uh, six, $700 for a high quality product. Some other people are not going to be ready to spend $400 at launch just because they don't buy anything at launch and they're going to wait for it to go on sale and get a better lineup of games. I think Sony wants as many people to be interested in the product at launch and get people, you know, transitioning from PS4 to PS5 really, really quickly and a good price point is going to help out on that. All right, moving on from that, Team Ninja is very busy right now working on Neo 2. They're finishing up the development of that game, but a lot of people want to see a brand new uh, Ninja Gaiden title. Of course, Team Ninja was famous for titles like Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden 2, uh, Ninja Gaiden 3, of course. So, a Ninja Gaiden 4, could that happen? Could we see the return of Ninja Gaiden? Speaking with IGN, Neo 2 director Fumihiko Yasuda has acknowledged the demand for Ninja Gaiden to return. He noted, quote, We are aware that some fans wanted Ninja Gaiden more than Neo 2. Now we see a lot of Ninja games like Sekiro Shadows Die twice as well. And we see a lot of good inspirations in those games. We hope to deliver some good news one day. So, it looks like they do want to make a new Ninja Gaiden game. Look, I miss Ryu. I want to play Ninja Gaiden again. And now with these challenging games being so in, Ninja Gaiden is not on the challenging level as some of these other titles, but Ninja Gaiden was definitely a hard game, especially if you were playing, like, max difficulty or whatever the case may be. Ninja Gaiden definitely had its appeal. I just remember going back to playing some of the older Ninja Gaiden games, however, recently and man, those games did have some wonky cameras, so hopefully they can iron those issues out. I, I don't recall if Ninja Gaiden 3 it was as bad, but I was going back and playing Ninja Gaiden Black, so yeah, I was going deep into the rabbit hole to dig out Ninja Gaiden Black. But that is something I do remember. I even love Ninja Gaiden on the Nintendo DS. If you guys have a DS, if you're still playing that, check out Ninja Gaiden Dragon Sword. That game was ridiculously awesome and probably one of the best visual games that the Nintendo DS has ever had. The visuals in that game are really strong. It was on par with some of the high quality PSP titles in terms of visuals. And it was just a really good game and really brought Ninja Gaiden to the Nintendo DS, so that was really cool to see. And I love Ninja Gaiden 2 as well. Ninja Gaiden 3 was pretty good, uh, but it did have some issues, but I thought Ninja Gaiden 2 was the strongest game in the series. Whatever the case may be, I want a Ninja Gaiden 3. I, w I should say I want a Ninja Gaiden 4. I would love to see a Ninja Gaiden collection release for PlayStation 4 or Xbox One uh, or even PlayStation 5. Whatever the case may be, Ryu definitely needs to make a comeback out of Ninja Gaiden. That is a franchise that has been gone for too long. We need to fix that. All right, lastly, I do want to note that Daymare 1998 has been confirmed for PS4, and its release date has also been confirmed. It's launched April 28th in the West. The third person survival horror game has gotten a release date and the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions of Daymare 1998 will launch on April 28th in the Americas and Daymare 1998 as far as the game itself it's a third person survival horror game with hardcore survival mechanics and unyielding enemies. It requires a strategic approach to combat and it's got puzzles and offers a multi-character perspective of the story revealing deep and obscure lore. The scene is set within a secret research facility, a deadly chemical weapon, and a special security team tasked with investigating an incident with the potential to become more than a routine security breach. Follow the steps of an elite soldier, a helicopter pilot, and a forest ranger as they play out their roles in an event that transforms one peaceful small town into a dead zone and its citizens into bloodthirsty murderers. Take the creatures down first and then look for any clues or evidence that you can piece together to make sense of the chaos. Keep track of your inventory as resources will be scarce. Anything can happen when your daymares become real. Multi-character point of view, fearsome enemies, realistic HUD where you can check your inventory health and position of a given piece of equipment environmental puzzles finding your way around is not always easy so look for clues you've got classic mechanics including limited ammo and save points backtracking collectibles tough enemies and more i don't know if save points is something that all people are going to be excited about but save points is something that definitely gets me a little bit nostalgic especially with horror games going back to games like resident evil 4 though i think save points are a great addition especially into games like this modern graphics and effects not everything is old school thanks to unreal engine 4 and experience in the 90s the game is a homage to the era with tons of references so for some people this is going to be a game right up your alley as far as the steam and pc reception it got a mostly positive reception 645 steam user reviews 78 positive on uh 78 positive on that and the metacritic score wasn't as kind with a 62 however with these horror titles i feel like some people are just going to be all over it and really enjoy it definitely has a little bit of a resident evil vibe going on for it as well but daymare will be headed to the playstation 4 on april 28th and it's finally coming over here so 
very excited for that as well. And if you're a horror game fan, that's going to be something to check out. Did release at $29.99 on uh, PC, so you should be mindful of that. And that's going to conclude this video. Again, based on Hiroki Totoki, it might be seeming like Sony is co not completely sure of what the PlayStation 5 price point is going to be. Definitely want to hear from you guys. What would be the price point that really sells you on it? I think for our audience, a lot of you guys are buying it day one regardless, but what price point would you like to see? Are some of you guys of the mindset that you're going to hold off? You're going to wait for more games to come? I'm actually really interested in that, and I think the price point is something that people are going to have their different reasons. Some people, again, they're going to want to spend seven, eight hundred dollars for a premier platform. Other people, their financial uh, situation, whatever the case may, uh, may be, some of you guys are in college, you can't be dropping $500, $600 on a console. $400 seems a lot more palatable, so it's going to vary from uh, person to person, and there's so many factors that uh, come into play regarding that. Team Ninja is aware of the demand for a new Ninja Gaiden game, so hopefully that comes at some point, because I definitely want to see the return of Ryu, and Daymare 1998 will be coming to PS4 and Xbox One, launching April 28th. That's going to wrap up this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.